Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web. Today, we're going to finally do something I've been wanting to do for years and years and years. We're going to fume some wood. Now, if you're not familiar with the term fuming, what it means simply is that we change the color of wood and we do that by using ammonia fumes. Before I even get started on this, I want to talk about safety uh, with this kind of a, a project that I'm doing today. I'm using something called 16% ammonia. Now, you may not think that's very strong, but this is industrial strength ammonia. It's very hard to find. You won't get it at the grocery store. You might be able to order it through a janitorial supply company. You can use the household ammonia that you can purchase at the uh, grocery store, but it's going to take you a lot longer. I wanted to get something much stronger because I need results quicker so that you can see what these things look like. Now, working with high concentrated ammonia, you need to know some, some safety issues. Um, first of all, it's lighter than air, so it evaporates fairly quickly. And I'm going to be using... I have a good quality 3M uh, mask that I'm going to be using. This is a 99.93 um, blockage of fumes, so it's a very good quality. Not super expensive, you know, you can find these things uh, reasonably priced, uh, but a good quality one and good quality um, filters in it. I'm also going to be using this little diving mask because apparently the ammonia can get into your body through your eyes. So it can make your eyes water and sting. Uh, and that's an important little thing. If you've got a full face mask with air into it, that is even better. But I don't have one of those. The other thing is do not do this in your house or even in your shop. You're far better to do this outside. So I'm going to show you in my shop what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to take it outside. I would normally film this outside, but it's windy and noisy out there today. So I'm going to show you in here what I'm going to do. Then I'll just go outside and do it. Uh, and then uh, when it's finished fuming, I'll bring it inside. So just quickly, these are the different species of wood that I'm going to fume so that we all get to see what these look like, because I've never done this before. So we're all going to learn this together. Um, so what I'm going to do, here's, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to label every one of these so we can see what they are. Then I'm going to run some um, tape down here, some duct tape on this part of it. And the duct tape should prevent the ammonia from uh, coming in contact with art. So, so we'll know what the species of wood is and we'll know what it was to start off with. So let me go ahead and label all of these and then I'll put the tape on. Uh, let me quickly run through these for you. This is holly, pine, maple, and this is a nice figured maple. You can see that. So I'm very interested in this one. This is cedar, gary oak, birch, red oak, and fir. Now the ones that I know are going to work well are the red oak, probably the gary oak, uh, and to a lesser degree the birch. Uh, I think we'll find the fir and the pine and the holly are not going to work quite as well because they don't have the high amounts of tannin contained in the wood. Now what I'm going to use today, I have this wood that is painted and what that will do is it will stop some of the absorption of the ammonia. So what I'm going to do, oh and by the way, this is just a, a dust collector bag that I haven't used yet and I like it because it's clear and it'll give me an idea. I'll be able to watch just how much uh, action there is to the wood as it's, as it's uh, changing color. So I'm just going to put those in there like that and like that all the way along, every one of them. Then I'm going to put, I'm going to put just a, a I don't know, a, maybe a quarter a cup of my ammonia in here and I'll put that over there like that. And that will be enough 
to for for the ammonia to get throughout um, in here because the ammonia is lighter than air so it'll distribute itself quite nicely in there in the top and bottom and of course I will seal the top and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it over like that and I'm just going to use a couple of wood pieces of wood and just some spring clamps to hold that nice and tight and that's what I'm going to do so I'm just going to take this outside the way it is right now and I'll go ahead and do the ammonia, uh, pour the ammonia in outside. Let me talk first of all about why you would want to fume wood and then I'll describe a little bit of the process without going into too much detail. Now first of all the reason you would want to fume wood is because the fumes go into the wood and they react with the tannin in the wood and they make the wood darker. Now in saying that the pros and the cons of fuming are that when you use oak for example when you fume oak you always get the same color it's not like a stain or a dye where you can get a more reddish color or a more uh, brownish color if you want it's always the same color now you can look at that as a, as a uh, pro or a con but the advantage of fuming depending on how long you allow the fumes to react with the wood it the fuming goes deeper and deeper and deeper unlike uh, dyes for example which will penetrate a little bit into the wood stains which basically lay right on top of the wood they'll penetrate a tiny bit uh, but fuming actually goes quite deep into the wood so um, depending on how deep and how long you stain for sometimes if you have a scratch or a nick in a piece of wood you won't even notice it because the fuming will actually have penetrated past that defect now fuming is something I've always wanted to do I've been interested in for years and years and I've read quite a bit about um, and if you want to know all of those details about the history of fuming and uh, where, how it all came about and where it happened and so on uh, of course there's an article about this on Woodwork Web the link is in the description box underneath this video uh, and this is also a good time for me to remind you if you haven't subscribed to my channel we'd love you to do that and don't forget to click the little gear box so that you get uh, informed every time I upload a video uh, but the fuming part of this is uh, very interesting to me so I'm quite fascinated to see what our results are going to be like I wish I could speed up this uh, process but we're just gonna have to wait for the wood to oxidize and we'll have a look and see what it looks like in a little bit let's start off by looking at some lighter ones now remember when we're doing fuming basically all we're doing is we're advancing the oxidization of wood so there is pine and you can see from fresh cut pine you can see how it's darkened it and typically pine will get a little bit darker with age but not but not too much so that's kind of normal uh, the fur what I liked about the fur look at the uh, look at what it did with the fur between the um, sapwood and the uh, heartwood uh, what that's done there so that's done some nice uh, had a nice effect on that uh, the birch but you can see how it's darkened it even then uh, let's move on to the maple I'm very intrigued with the maple what it did with the maple it it sort of darkened everything about equally but it didn't destroy the figure in there if you look at the right light you can see how that figure is still moving around in there so that's kind of nice uh, the cedar which typically I don't use very often but uh, you can see how it really did make a difference on the cedar it's taken from a red to a gray the holly is very interesting uh, where's my holly look at the difference in the holly and I don't know if you can tell in this light but it's taken it a very yellow almost a greeny color um, so very interesting what it's done to Holly a, a little bit of a different effect there uh, and one of the ones that I wanted to see Gary Oak it's taken the Gary Oak uh, where's my Gary Oak sample right there you can see what it's done there a huge difference a lot of tannin in oaks and you can see how it's darkened that down and the other one that I was very interested to see which was the red oak to really make a difference but you can see there what it's done and what's nice about fuming is you get a consistent color 
every time. It's always this same kind of color. You don't have to worry about different lot colors. It, uh, it pretty much gives you the same basic color each time you do. There's the edge grains of all of these, and I cut these in about oh, an inch and a half or two inches deep, so uh, I would avoid any seepage from the ends. Uh, but you can see how the Gary Oak, it's a sixteenth of an inch. It's all the way around. It has really uh, come in quite deeply. What's interesting with the holly is it looks like it's filled the whole thing. There's um, it, the inside grain is pretty much the same as what's on the outside. Now the red oak is interesting. It's seeped in fairly well, uh, but it's a little harder to see. You might not even be able to see on camera, but I can see in some of these areas where it's seeped in a little bit. What's interesting, the the softwood, the cedar, has had very little seepage, but look at how it's come through the grain. It's actually seeped in through the grain, through the sides there. Uh, and the fur, the same thing. But let's do a bit of a scratch test and see if we can see anything. Here's the holly, and you really can't even notice that at all. Here's the Gary Oak, and you can see that that, you can't even I can I can hardly even see that the red oak again it's that's very deep so there's nothing it's gone that's how deep it is I'm scratching as hard as I can here and even the cedar it's deep into that there's the fur so very interesting well, that concludes my video on fuming. Honestly, it's something I've wanted to do for 20 or 30 years. I've known about it for a long, long time. In fact, this could be one of the oldest uh, finishing techniques for woodworkers. So it's a, it's a very, very old technique. It has some definite advantages if you've ever scratched wood or if your wood gets scratched or is scratched. It's a great way of um, hiding it, it's you. A lot of the stuff I, you can't even see when you scratch it hard, so it goes very deep, and it gives you a nice consistent color. It's easy to do. You take all your wood, bundle it up, put it in a plastic bag, and let it fume for however long it is you want, however dark you want it, and then you pull it out, let it air out a little bit, and start using it, and it's all ready to go. Uh, all you need to do is put a top finish on it after that. So. Don't forget there will be an article, uh, and probably one of the more detailed articles I've ever done because it's something I've really been interested in. So uh, if you're interested in fuming, uh, check out that article on Woodwork Web. I'm Colin Kinnett. Thanks for watching.